Wouldn't it be nice to have several thought leaders in your industry know and love your brand? Start a podcast. Invite your industry's thought leaders to be guests on your show. And start reaping the benefits of having a network full of industry influencers. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. I'm your host for today's episode, Sean Blackburn with Sweetfish Media. I'm joined today by Andrew Miller. He is the co-founder of Workshop Digital. Andrew, how are you doing today? Doing great, Sean. Good to talk with you. Absolutely. Stoked to talk about our topic today, using customer centricity to build a better agency. But before we jump into that, please tell our listeners a little bit about you and your background and what it is that you guys do over at Workshop Digital. Sure. So as you mentioned, I'm one of the co-founders here at Workshop Digital, also the director of operations. So my role and my responsibilities are to make sure that our teams are delivering the best results and the best communication and best partnerships with our clients uh, as possible. So I oversee our pay-per-click teams, our search engine optimization teams, and our analytics teams to make sure we're painting that whole picture for the client and keeping them happy. Fantastic. What is it that you guys specialize over in at Workshop Digital? So our primary focus is on search engine marketing. So we play heavily in the the lower funnel, the lower portion of the marketing funnel, if you will, the search engine marketing space with organic search engine optimization and pay-per-click advertising across a variety of search and social channels, primarily focused on lead generation for B2B companies and B2C companies. We don't have as much expertise in e-commerce and retail. So the majority of our strategies are built around helping sales-based organizations grow their footprint and grow their their qualified leads and then help them nurture and, and work with those leads to close more sales. Awesome. Well, Andrew, I know that building a better agency is a passion point for you guys over at Workshop Digital. So maybe help us define some of the problem. Uh, do you think that agencies traditionally struggle with being customer centric? And if so, what do agencies typically center around, would you say? So a lot of agencies we feel like are focused on uh, solving a particular problem, whether it's a, a marketing challenge or a design challenge or a customer research and information challenge. Um, we take an approach of the, the building a better agency model, which basically for us is our mantra that allows us to question our processes, our results, and the way we go about doing our day-to-day business to understand really, are we doing everything as well as we can and how can we make things better? So we did get a lot of similar questions when we uh, when we updated our core purpose around building a better agency. Some of the questions like better than who or does this mean we're not good enough? And the answers to those are you know that we're not trying to be better than anybody explicitly. We're trying to be better than we were yesterday and last week and last year. And if we can show improvement and we can be open and honest with each other and and question everything we're doing and try to find a better way to improve even our our back office processes, then we're doing the right work and we're growing the business and we're, we're focusing on our customers. And to that customer centricity point, uh, we do look at kind of a, a different model, a different layering of customers. So in our mind, we have three customers, actually. We have our clients, obviously, that pay the bills. They hire us to, to help them solve specific challenges. They have their customers or their mm. prospects or clients. Uh, so that's the end customer. And we also have our teams, our people. We look at them as uh, another constituency or, or a set of stakeholders that need to be considered when we're, when we're questioning our value and, and how we improve our processes. So we yeah. kind of take that holistic view and, and looked at 
look at every decision, every challenge through those lenses to make sure we're doing right by all of those constituents. So one of the questions that I have, you know, how did you guys come to this? And you mentioned kind of a, a rebrand or, or a redoing of your website and your core purpose. You know, how did you guys or what did you guys move from in the process of kind of finding this nothing, nothing is sacred? You know, how can we make this better mindset? So we, we were like a lot of other agencies that had a, a generic, bland, vanilla tagline. And, and that was... <laughs> Or a, a vision, I should say, to be thought leaders in digital marketing execution. And it made me want to throw up every time I said it, <laughs> uh, every time I heard it. And we realized it was the wrong vision, although it sounds good, it sounds fuzzy, it, it, uh, it, it may resonate with people that don't really understand digital marketing. But to us, it required too much explanation, right? A, a, a clear, compelling vision that shouldn't require another two and a half minutes of of context to help people understand, well, what do you mean by thought leaders? What do you mean by execution of a digital marketing strategy? So we batted around dozens of different versions of that, trying to simplify the wording, trying to come up with less cliche ways to say the same thing. And at the end of the day, we settled on mm -hmm. this concept that we're not trying to be one specific thing, right? There's, there's not one end goal, there's not one finish line, and there's no way to quantify whether or not we are thought leaders or if we are better at executing than anybody else. But we can all agree that everything is open for debate and everything is subject to questioning, you know, are we doing this the best way possible? What have we learned from our own experience, from others' experiences, and how do we take what we're doing and make it better? That's That was the light bulb moment for us where we tried to solve for the end goal, which is let's just make sure we're getting better. Let's not try to be perfect or try to be all things to all people, but we need to make sure we're moving forward constantly. So that was a that was a huge light bulb for us. So we can actually untether our vision or our core purpose from anything tangible or subjective. I really like that this vision of building a better agency just came organically out of trying to build a better agency for yourselves. So kudos to you guys on that. You know, you drive this customer centric focus in kind of three realms, and you mentioned the three. You now maybe unpack how this applies to your clients' customers and how you guys focus on that internally. Sure. Yeah, so our clients' customers, they're the they're the reason we exist, right? Our job is to connect our clients with their next prospect or customer. So we, we have to start our journey there. And I think we all know we can put our consumer hat on for a minute, even though we're talking in a B2B context. We're all consumers. Right. And we were being conditioned as consumers to expect more from the companies and the brands that we're engaging with and buying from. And a simple example of that is, is how much research is being done now before any transaction or any, any purchase or consideration. Even on the B2B side, we see sales cycles now, including customers that are more engaged, more informed, and better educated about their options than ever before. So salespeople and sales-based organizations have to adapt and make sure that they're meeting those customers where they are. So our client customers are demanding more from our clients. And so therefore, we have to be at each of those touch points in their, their journey to finding a solution. So if they're in the, soft, you know, if they're in the market for some B2B software or manufacturing equipment or even a, a service, we need to make sure that we're there as they start their journey, typically on a search engine, starting to research, gather some facts, build a consideration set. We have to be there when they're polling their peers and their colleagues to see if anybody has any recommendations or reviews or referrals that they could work with. That might happen on a channel like LinkedIn or Quora or Twitter. Uh, and we have to be there when the prospect lands on our client's site. So we have to be there with the right content, the right messaging, the right value for them so that we're, we're helping our clients engage in each step of that journey. And that will help the, our clients' customers really feel like they're getting valuable information at each step of the, the sales process and not feel like they're being sold to right mm -hmm. when they pick up the phone. It's story time, and this growth story is about search engine marketing. Okay, so the story revolves around eSub, a project management SaaS company specifically for subcontractors. Even though eSub had incredible customer attention, they struggled with growth. Being a niche service, they discovered that there was little demand expressed for their solutions within search engines. To take on this challenge, eSub hired Directive Consulting, the B2B search marketing agency. After refining targeting, pre-qualifying clicks with an ad copy, 
and developing custom landing pages, Directive was able to increase eSub's marketing qualified leads by 71% while decreasing their cost per lead by 65%. I have a hunch that Directive can get these kind of results for you too. So head over to directiveconsulting.com and request a totally free custom proposal. That's directiveconsulting.com. All right, let's get back to this interview. I really like that. And how do you guys practically kind of take this to your team internally as well? And I know that we'll get to that in a second as far as how the customer-centric focus affects your team. But whenever you're focusing on your clients' customers, how do you feel like that differentiates you from maybe an agency that is not as customer-centric? So one of the things we love to do is uh, phantom shop our clients or our prospective clients and dig into how they, how their salespeople and sales organizations are set up to answer questions and objections. And, you know, we're not, we're not going to go in there and pretend to buy a, a $5 million jet engine, but <laughs> we can, we can certainly replicate that by getting on the phone with some of their salespeople uh, in an open environment and asking some of the buying questions that we suspect people might have. All right. So we like to dig in during our discovery phase and, and learn about the common questions they're receiving objections that they're handling on a, on a frequent basis and really digging into what does it mean to be on the front line of this organization dealing with your prospects and customers so that we can go out and find more people like them and start to address some of those questions and concerns and, and opportunities earlier in the customer's research process. Uh, so sometimes that takes the shape of you know doing some in-depth discovery work and, and sitting down with our, our clients and their teams. And sometimes, uh, more often than not, it results in us using other tools to dig into consumer behavior and search intent and the ways that our prospects and their cohorts are using the internet, in this case, to to research potential solutions. So figuring out what questions they're most likely to ask, what terms they're most likely to type into a search engine, which reviews site they're most likely to peruse as they're weighing their options and, and so on. I love that. Some hand to hand, uh, you know, recon. <laughs> so uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. How does this also apply to how you guys approach your clients in general? Obviously, customer-centric focus is going to probably lend itself to this being the most obvious spot of the three. Uh, But how is it that you guys approach your customers in a way that puts them central to you know building the better agency? Well, we like to we like to joke with our clients that we're going to help make them better marketers, right? So we're not here just to plug in and become a cog in their marketing machine and Mm -hmm. and just point a fire hose of traffic at their website or their landing pages. Our job is really to partner with our clients and educate them. So not that they need to become experts in search engine optimization or pay-per-click or even you know generic lead driving strategy. But we want them to understand how it works and what the inputs and outputs are so they can take that back to their stakeholders and their organizations and really advocate for including these tactics and strategies in their overall marketing plans. So through that partnership lens, we, we have to make sure we're asking the right questions of our clients and digging into issues that might come up, you know, understanding the data that they have access to or, or could have access to, and sometimes even, you know, peeking under the hood a little bit of their, their sales or, and marketing organizations and realizing that they may appear to have it all together on the surface. You know, they may represent themselves publicly and, and to their, their prospects extremely professionally, mm. but a lot of times you'll find in, in professional organizations and, and brands, they're scrambling underneath the water as, as much as we are, right? We're all struggling to keep up and make sure that we're staying on top of trends and, and gathering all the data that we can in one place. And that's, that's typically what we find. So we actually come in and, and, and have to do a lot of this discovery work up front to figure out, okay, what, what is truth and what is the ideal state and how do we bridge the gap? Mm. And, you know, I think that a mindset like you guys take with your clients of equipping them to be better marketers, you know, it's, it's not a scarcity mindset and it is a mindset of empowerment, I would say, for your customers and to treat them that way. Do you feel like that was something that you learned or is that something that you guys have always really had as a core competency? It's something I feel like we come to naturally. Uh, our teams are, are outgoing, smart folks that, that happen to land in the digital marketing realm. I feel like they would be successful in any role they're in because they are people people at, the, at their mm-hmm. core. So it's, it's in our DNA to relate to our clients. And we've, we've found that reinforce time and time again over the years. And, and we like to say that our best clients are more educated and more informed about what we do so they can hold us accountable to meeting their objectives. None of us want to be known as the, 
the agency or the partner that only sends a dashboard once a month and, and puts up a, a bunch of numbers that, that don't make sense to the client. We, we actually want them to understand what they mean, what it means for their business, and then ask the hard questions if they need to be asked. Sometimes it does come down to having an uncomfortable uh, conversation with a client, but it, at the end of the day, it results in a stronger partnership and they know they can trust us to tell them the truth and not try to sugarcoat anything. Yeah, I love that. And you know, the, the third spot that you mentioned is how you structure your team. And that's a big part of being customer centric, I would imagine. What's part of that culture that you guys have internally that really helps you do this uh, at the agency? So one of the things that, that we hire for aggressively are uh, people's problem solving skills and their critical thinking skills. So even if they don't come to digital marketing by education or by trade, you know, we can teach them those skills. But what we found we can't teach somebody is the, the ability to dig into problems and look at it from an outside perspective and really question everything, question your assumptions and, and come up with unique solutions uh, for each situation. And so kind of going back to how we landed on Workshop Digital as a company name, it wasn't just go through the dictionary and find two words that hadn't been put together before. We really do pride ourselves on taking this handcrafted, almost boutique approach to solving challenges. So we, we wanted to get back to that organic workshop vibe where all of the solutions and strategies we build for our clients are customized for them. You know, we don't have a, a, a standard conveyor belt that all of our clients travel down just to shoot out the other end and, and appear identical to the rest of our, our clients. So if we're doing our jobs right, our teams our, and our internal teams are empowered to customize solutions for their clients and live up to one of our core values, which is we go the extra mile for our clients. So we have this obligation, most of it's internalized, but we have this obligation to make sure that our clients have a unique experience with us and that they get some value from us that they're not getting anywhere else. Sometimes that means putting in extra time. It means building custom software to help integrate some of their systems on the back end. Sometimes that means bringing them to our office or traveling to theirs just to sit down with them and have a conversation with other parts of their organization that they may not typically associate with a marketing function. And all of those things have worked really well for us to, to get to know our clients as people and help our teams really understand what it means to be in our client's shoes and therefore bring to them a custom solution that's going to help satisfy their, their needs or scratch their itch. I love that. And you know, you're really talking about building extra value for your clients and giving your clients an extra reason to go with you guys as opposed to somebody else. You know, building a customer centric agency is an easy thing to say. And I know that it's been a journey for you guys. What are some of those common things that kind of get in the way for people building an agency? And, and what are some of the things that are just hard about this? Gosh, uh, the, well, the people portion of the equation is always the most challenging, right? It's even, even with a motivated, skilled team. Sometimes it's a challenge to rally people around a central cause and a, and a core purpose as big as building a better agency. Mm. So one of the things we've discovered, we meaning Brian Forrester, my co-founder, and myself and our management team, is that we have to be very deliberate and, mo and more deliberate about how we communicate and roll out changes within the company. There's a, there's a great book that we reference all the time, Start With Why by Simon Sinek, and it's simple on its surface. But it's a great reminder for us that even though there's a decision that maybe we've been wrestling with or working on or a change to our services and how we deliver them that we've been thinking about and working on for, for weeks or months in some cases, and the first time that our teams or our clients hear about these changes shouldn't be uh, riddled with confusion, right? Yeah. We have to provide that clarity up front and explain why we're doing things. So we've, we've had a much higher success rate when we're, we're announcing changes or evolving our delivery of our services, when we can really start with why we're trying to solve this in the first place and what we hope to achieve and what does it look like when it's done. So just answering some of those questions really helps alleviate some of the natural concern that people have with change in general. And that, that to me, I think has been the big aha moment for us as an agency in helping evolve and grow and adapt our teams and our services because we can't afford to sit still. Right. And if we just get comfortable where we are or we're afraid to create change, then we're going to get left behind in no time as the digital marketing landscape changes all around us. And, you know, if you could share some encouragement with people who are on the agency side of things, you know, what is some of the upside that you guys have seen from doing this and, and why is this worthwhile? So as an agency, we measure a couple of things uh, that are core to our business. One is employee retention and 
satisfaction. So mm-hmm. we're big on gathering feedback. We're big on having quarterly check-ins where we're, we're assessing not only performance, but also gathering feedback on what's going well, what could be going better, and how are we growing and evolving our teams to meet future challenges, right? So working towards future goals. And we do the same thing with our clients. We measure client retention and client attrition to make sure that you know, we're spotting any trends that are leading to leading to clients being dissatisfied or clients seeking out other solutions or even just clients being wowed by the sizzle that somebody else might be bringing to a trade show or a conference or a proposal. So we have to, we have to look closely at all of those things and make sure that we're asking ourselves the hard questions and not just assuming that, you know, we're, we're getting great results and we're doing the right things for our clients. Therefore, they must be happy. We have to really make sure that our, our teams and our clients are really seeing the, the, the value and the relationship that we have with them and not just, you know, not just seeing us as uh, a provider of a paycheck or the provider of a, a monthly report. I love that. Well, Andrew, this has been a great conversation and I love the perspective that you guys bring to your agency. Yeah, I mean, this customer centricity to build a better agency is an awesome perspective. So if anybody is listening and has any questions, would like to connect with you, you know, what's the best way for someone to do that? Well, email is simple. I'm Andrew at workshopdigital.com. The other Option is connect on LinkedIn, or if you're a Twitter user, I am at Andrew C. Miller on Twitter. Any, any or all of those will come right to me, and I would love to continue the conversation. Awesome. Well, Andrew, thanks again for being on the show. We certainly appreciate you being on. John, I appreciate it, and looking forward to answering other questions that come up. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.